Good morning, church family. I pray that you guys are all doing well during these difficult times. My name is David Smith, and I get the honor of sharing thoughts on Acts chapter 18 this morning. I only have a few minutes, so I'm going to move really quickly. Well, as we continue our walk through Acts, we see so many important events in this chapter. Uh, Paul leaves Athens and goes to Corinth. We learn that Paul is actually a tent maker by trade, and um, we also find him taking up his usual practice of teaching in the synagogues. But over time there, he's rejected by the Jews and leaves the synagogue to again preach to the Gentiles. One of the really impactful parts of this chapter is that Paul has another vision where he's affirmed by God that he is actually doing what he's been called to do, that he's doing it in the place that God wants him doing it. And that gives him great confidence and great courage. He still faces many challenges from the Jews. And after about a year and a half, he ends up leaving for Ephesus. Well, he only stays in Ephesus for a short time and he tells the people that he'll be back if it's God's will. And of course, we find out in chapter 19 that it is God's will that he return. So I encourage you to learn a lot more about the difficulties that early Christians faced in places like Corinth and Ephesus, because I think both of them share a lot of similarities in the difficulties that Christians face around the world today. We know that Paul would end up writing letters back to these churches in First and Second Corinthians and then in Ephesians, and also that Jesus will end up writing to the church at Ephesus using John to pen the letter for him in Revelation chapter 2. But today I want to look at a different aspect of this chapter. I want to look at the introduction of two other people, Priscilla and Aquila. Now, there are uh, reasons that these folks are kind of important to me, uh, because I have a hard time imagining myself as the Apostle Paul. His conversion experience was obviously really unique. Uh, his suffering, the shipwrecks, the jails, the beatings, um, his preaching and teaching, his leading of people is, is well beyond anything I can imagine, and, and frankly, anybody else's life that I can imagine. But any of us could be Priscilla or Aquila. They're business people. They're tent makers. Uh, they come into contact with Paul and are transformed by the Holy Spirit. We find throughout this chapter and in places like Romans and Timothy that this husband and wife team become completely focused on disciple making. They become grounded in their faith under Paul's teaching, just as we are under Randy's teaching. They become so well grounded that they can lovingly and carefully redirect a fellow brother who isn't preaching the full gospel. They end up following Paul to Ephesus, and then after he leaves, they stay, supporting the church, making disciples, and encouraging new believers. They ultimately return to Rome and end up starting their own house church. And uh, in all this, they move from being tent makers who make disciples uh, to being disciple makers who make tents. So think about that. They end up being tent makers who make disciples to being disciple makers who make tents. So regardless of your earthly profession, your calling is to be a disciple maker. Uh, Jesus commands, not ask or suggest, but commands us to go forth and make disciples. So if you're a business person or a teacher or a doctor or a stay-at-home mom, whatever your role, don't let that be your identity. Let your identity be that of a child of God who lets, uses their profession uh, to advance the calling as a disciple maker. So a child of God who uses their profession to advance the calling to be a disciple maker. So one great definition for disciple maker is a Christian who enters into a relationship with people to help them trust and follow Jesus. So who are you discipling right now? What relationships are you investing in that allow you to help someone trust and follow Jesus? These are really difficult times, and this is the perfect time to teach somebody and show somebody how to trust and follow Jesus. So we can't be Paul, at least I can't, but I think any of us can be Priscilla or Aquila. Thank you.